Hey YouTube, welcome back. Uh, thank you for joining me again. Today we are on a rogue list. Um, I've been playing this as a best of one deck. It does have a sideboard, but I've been mainly playing it as a best of one deck just because it's a little more stronger in a best of one deck, but you could play it as a best of three deck. I created a sideboard for it. So if you want to play this as a best of three deck, you can. But the video that, I mean, the gameplay we're going to be doing is going to be best of one. But I will give you the sideboard here and give you the um, sideboard guide for it if you want to play it as the best of three. So it will be up to you. But before we go ahead and get into that deck tech, into the sideboard guide, into the gameplays and whatnot, um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that follow button. Um, in the description of the video, you'll have the stream decker deck link. You'll have the... Um, the link to my Twitch, you'll have the link to my Discord, you'll have the link to, you know, just check out the description. It gives you the information about the deck, it gives you all that other information stuff, but for sure, go ahead and hit that. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe, hit that like button, hit that um, notification button. So whenever I post videos, you'll get the notification when I have a video up. But yeah, let's get into that deck tech. So this is Rogues. Um, like I said, we're gonna do this. We're gonna play this as a best of one deck. It's a little different than the normal rogue decks you see, just because I feel like in a best of one, it's kind of different format than a best of three. It's not a different format. Like it's it's the same decks you're gonna be playing in best of three, but they're gonna be altered to be more against maybe aggressive decks than they are normally against in a best of three. So, so that's why we also alter the deck to change our meta in a best of one versus a best of three. But I think this deck is still good as a best of three deck anyways, so it's up to you. All right, so we're playing three wind robbers. Obviously, this is rogue cards. Great. Once they get eight cards into the graveyard, you can start sacking this and then using lures to keep bringing it back and drawing cards. Four rune crab. Obviously, it's, it's a mill deck, so you would need to get X amount of cards into the graveyard before all your rogues activate. So this card's great for that. It's not so good after, you know, game two, game three. But, you know, until then, it's very good. We have three blood sheets. We need the early interaction removal. This is a one mana removal, which allows us still to use our one mana drops on turn two. So this is three of these. Um, I wouldn't take this. You could take this up to four if you like, but I think I'd like it at three. It's because... Um, after like turn two, turn three, it starts requiring four mana. And if at that point, I'd rather just run like hardest act or eliminate. There's not that many planeswalkers or there shouldn't be that many planeswalkers theoretically in a best of one match. So that's why I like this at three rather than four because the planeswalker effect won't really matter. Obviously four guild enforcers, your mill deck, a one draw flash. Um, so this is the addition that we're adding is um, acquisition expert. And the reason why we're adding this is one, it, it's a rogue. So it triggers with this guy, it trigger, or I should say with her, it triggers with this guy. Um, on top of that, it discards a card out of their hand. It's also a turn two human. So that's another reason why, because, so this is a non-human, non-human, but because this is a turn two human it helps out of one mind also. So you can cast say rune crab turn one, and if you don't have Soaring Thought Thief, you can cast Acquisition Expert turn two, and then play a one mind turn three. So that's another reason. We have two Heartless Acts. Sorry about that. We have two Heartless Acts, so we could do some removing of their creatures to help us with our tempo. Obviously for Adrenaline Locks, this is our counter spell, our removal spell. You can't change this. Um, I would keep this at four. Don't even bother messing with this. Um, for Soaring Thought Thief, this helps us mill. Four of one mind. You can easily take this down to three if you choose, but I kept it at four because I want to, in a best of one, I want to try to draw a lot of cards. So, And since we're running, what is it, three, six, um, ten... 14, uh, 18 creatures, it should hopefully get us active with it. But like I said, you could move this down to three if you like, and maybe add another Heartless Act if you like, or even move the Merfolk Wind Robber up to four. 
but I kept it at three for a uh, four at a best of one. But like I said, you could easily ch take this down to three. Three of Diem's Awakening. This is a land and a way to bring back our creatures. If you don't have this card, you can easily just do um, the the black spell that returns the cards from the graveyard. Three costs or less. I forgot what it's called. But it's a three mana cost card that returns three costs or less back from the graveyard. And since you're running two drops and one drops, you can return two back from the graveyard. Um, but the reason we have this in here is because it's a land. Worst case scenario is a land or it could return our creatures back from the graveyard. Four into the stories. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I have to, there's no reason really to explain this. Once they have several more cards in the graveyard, since you're milling cards out of them with all of the great, um, with all the Murph uh, rogues, it, you draw four cards. So like that's clearly there. Then we have our lands. Our lands are pretty basic. We split the deceit and the triumph three to three. Triumph's good for cycling, and then the deceit is good for scrying. So that's why we have it as a three three. So in case we need to scry, we do this. If we in case we need to cycle, we do this. So we, you know it goes both ways. But yeah, this is the deck. Like I said, I'm going to try it in the best of one. Obviously, I have a cyborg guard. So, or a cyborg and a cyborg guard. I post, I'll do that at the end of the video. I'll go ahead and make a cyborg guide if you want to choose to play this as a best of three deck. Um, otherwise, I uh, play it as a best of one deck and see what happens. But yeah, that's, um, if you haven't done so again, remember, hit that subscribe button and let's go into the matches. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Bordo, Bordo. <clears throat> Bordo, Bordo. Um, so, all right, we'll keep. As soon as we start drawing some uh, rogues, it'll be a lot better. We have a two cost and a three cost. That's another land. <clears throat> Are we playing against blue black control? Probably. Probably looks well that we're gonna see what we're gonna do with that one. So this time we're gonna play so as if you control a human creature and a non human creature. Okay. So we're playing it looks like against blue black. I'm assuming blue black. Okay, what Deck plays Thassa. Huh. Frantic, okay. Okay, yes. Ugh, another into the story. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. We play this. We go to eight. All right, let's attack first. I have. Ah, uh, maybe I shouldn't be attacking here. In case he has like a random shark typhoon or something. Three into the stories is uh, got all the draw power, I guess. Neutralize. Okay, so he has blue black control. But what's with the Dasa then? That's kind of weird, if you ask me. Oh my gosh. I am just drawing so many lands here. Maybe I should have kept that to cycle then. We'll add Loras to our hand. We have three into the stories, but we need his graveyard, their graveyard, whatever to start filling up. We have zero rogues. We have, I mean, we obviously have a lot of rogues left. Okay. Uh, hmm. Let's try this. This will help us mill some cards too. So it'd be six. If he lets us resolve, it'll be six. If he doesn't, we can always play Loras, but then we have to worry about extinction of it. Since we can't play, we could actually play Loras. All right, we're gonna put on black. So we have one, two, three green, or three blue. Oh, there's a cling to dust. Well, already then. Alright, I guess he's going to be able to cling here and 
get rid of some of his graveyard. Or he's gonna kill he's gonna kill Rune Crab. Interesting. We're gonna play this on his turn. Because if he was gonna play Kling, he was gonna just gonna play it. And I don't think he's gonna play Kling now. So we're just gonna do this at end step. Let him use a counter spell here. That way he's tapping out his mana on his turn rather than on our turn. It's, it's a big factor. Bordy, Bordy. Counter this. We have two more in our hand, but. Bordy, Bordy. Thoughts intervention. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. One, two, three, four. All right, so now we can hold up. We can play John and Lock and play. Okay, so you can't play Kling yet, so we're just going to hold this up at instant speed. Once again, we're going to play this at instant speed because there's nothing we can do anyways with our mana at this turn time. And he can't play Kling to exile his graveyard because this costs four. So since it does only costs four, there's no reason for us to go ahead and do it. Obviously, um, we could have done it because he only had three mana, so you can only counter it once. And now if he plays Kling, we have, you know, Fay of Wishes. Interesting. I guess we could always just counter whatever he grabs with Fay of Wishes. Then if he casts it at a creature, we can always... Because he has a lot of cards. He has eight cards. Unless it gets Ugin or something, then... But then even if he gets Ugin, he has to exile his graveyard first before he casts Ugin. What is this? You have no maximum mana size at the beginning of your upkeep. Put a knowledge counter in and draw a card. Then draw a card for each knowledge counter on it. I don't know if you want to be doing that. <clears throat> Since I'm trying to mill you out. Not really sure that's the right idea. I could be wrong. So he's going to be playing that, right? So let's do, yeah, let's do this. Grab the crab back, cast the crab, and then we mill him here. Yeah, I'm not really sure that's the play you want to be. Ooh, uh, we have another into the story in our hand. This can help us mill more cards. He has 40 cards, but I think we're still looking for some spells here. Play this when we attack, we mill him. And it also boosts our power. Kind of in kind of weird. So this costs him like three mana, I guess, right? Yep. But how is he gonna get his Huh? We have no creatures in the graveyard. That's not gonna help us out. Bay of Wishes, sure. Another into the story. Okay, let's see what we draw. So, mill some cards. Let's mill some cards. Let's grab, I guess, a blue source here. There's another cling. Let's mill him some. Then we're going to play this, mill him some, and then sack it to draw a card. And then replay it. So, let's sack this, draw a card. And then recast to mill him again. Is that 27 cards? There's another Fey of Wishes. All right, so he can't kill any of our creatures. So let's just attack with everything here. Mill him two more cards. We're also putting some pressure on against him. He has, what, 23 cards left in his deck. He's gonna draw, what is it, one card off it? And then next turn will be two cards and then three cards. That's gonna help us mill him. He only has 21 cards left in his deck. 
as soon as I start drawing a few more drone unlocks, then it's just going to close out the game even further. He's also at 10. It's an interesting card to add to your deck. I think this card would be more powerful in a Yorion deck if you're going to play it. Play it in a Yorion deck so that way you have an additional two or additional 20 cards in your deck. So you could return it and then cast it, but then he can't use whatever he searches for. He doesn't have enough mana to do that. So it's like reduce your mana cost and stuff like that, maybe. It'd be worth it, but searching for this, I thought he was going to search for like Ugin or something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll go to nine mana. We'll just a swing with everything again. Mill three cards. So he'll go down to 18. We'll attack. He'll go down to, what is it, 16? Shipwrecker, sure. This guy, my opponent, has a very interesting best of one deck. He could grab like an eliminate or something like that. Negate, sure. Not really sure that's going to help you either, opponent. Dun, 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 dun. There's no reason to sack it here because we could just do it on our turn if we need to, anyways. So let's see, mill him. And now with the, that, there's extinction. So let's mill you another two cards with Guild Enforcer. If you counter this, we have sure. Okay. We could just bring it back out if we want. Let's play into the story. Let's see what we get from into the story, I guess. Ooh, I wish I would have had that first. All right. So let's play this. Um, what is this? More cards. No more cards. Down to 14. He's going to go down to what? Like 10 cards here. Um, combat. Swing with everything, I guess. No, another four cards. You're down to six cards, opponent. Sure. Sure. So you take three, six, take nine. You got a one. Okay. Down to five. Down to five. And you're going to draw two and then draw for your draw phase. Yikes. Yikes. I just have to literally play crab in a land and win the game. What is this? Extinction? Bay of Wishes. Sure. What could Fae of Wishes grab that would do something with three mana? Interesting deck, opponent. Very, very interesting. Shadow's Verdict, but no, you're nowhere near the mana for that. You're missing two. There we go. All right, again, some blue, black, whatever deck. You click end turn, but change your mind before the turn ends. You can cancel that quickly by pressing enter or clicking end turn again. You click end turn, but change your mind before the turn ends. Abinoko or something like that. Hmm. All right, turn one, play this. Turn two, shock, play this. We get to grab a card out of his hand. Get to start milling him a little bit, hopefully. So play this, to play this. Are we playing against Black White Doom? Esper Doom? It's looking like it's Black White. Agonizer Remorse, opening hand, it's pretty good. What is he going to take? I'm assuming Acquisition Expert. Since he could take Merfolk 
Walker, I guess, too. Maybe no, be taking the removal. So pay three life, make him discard a card out of his hand. And then we can attack him. That would put three cards in the discard pile. So now we can start glass pool mimic. So he is Esper. Interesting. The last pool mimic. Sure, we could kill it. We can kill it. Um, so I can kill it. I guess we'll destroy this. So is he playing Esper Rogues or something, or what's going on here? Or is that just in the main deck just because of life gain or something? Hmm. Okay. There's the blue. We could add Loris to our hand if we're not going to do anything. Especially he doesn't have enough. We can't, unless we draw a rogue or something, we might just add Loris to our hand because we can't, obviously, we can't do anything. Cycling is not going to help us out. Went to the top. So it's going to get milled, I'm assuming. That means it's going to get milled. Okay, so what you gonna take? Ooh. Ooh, this costs one. Nice. Human, non human. So, alright. So, let's mill. Maze Mind Tone, okay. Um, let's play this, mill some more cards, and now they're active. Um,. I feel like we're gonna play this tapped. Let's attack. And then we can start second them and drawing cards. We go back to a three card hand. And he has 11 in the discard pile. We're looking good. That was a good draw. Very, very good draw. Extinction event, he could take our odds, but then we could draw two cards, so it only takes one. Hagu Mauler, sure. Uh, like I said, there's no point of doing that. So let's attack. We don't need to draw anything right now. So we're just going to keep it going. Plus, we also don't want to just like slam into a extinction event against them. One, two, three blue. One, two, three black. Let's put this on blue. You can always sack these at into the speed if he ever tries to do something. Sure. Attack. We're killing him slowly. See, is he kind of some weird Esper rogues or because that's a rogue too. Um. So he's going to tax our mana. Let's scry first. Don't need another land. So I can sack this, play this, recast it. Then you can use extinction. Is it worth it? All right, let's try one, I guess. All right, well, since we're doing that, I'm just going to flash this in. Do that, do that. Yeah, force him to do something against our creatures right now. Because we flash this in, this is three, four, five. He's going to eventually have to do something. So flash. Mill you some cards. My turn. Oh, okay. Well, that's game if he doesn't have a removal spell then. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good game, opponent. Well, there we go. That was a quick one. This is some fast, fast. We got some fast games, hopefully, with our rogue deck. Get some fast action in. Do we get to play first? We do get to play first. 
Um, I think turn one, turn two, flash. Yeah, we'll keep. So turn one, turn two, flash. Untap land. I guess I need it. So into the story. Otherwise, we don't have into the story mana right now. All right, so we're playing against the aggro deck, the mono white aggro, whatever it's called. All right. If he attacks, we'll flash this in. Obviously, he's not going to attack. But if he does, we'll flash this in. Ooh, okay. Maybe that's weird. Okay, I guess now he'll flash it in. Or now he'll attack. I'm wondering if he has any, like, random instant speed pump spell. So if I flash this in, attack, go mill four. Or not flash, but cast, I should say. Mill four. And then we'll play this. Next turn, we'll mill him another four. With this, we'll be five. And we're also bringing his life total down, sort of. Skyclave, darn. All right, so he gets to hit us for two, I guess. No blocks. Can't play into the story two, three. That would make it seven. Actually, we could play into the story now. Let's go grab. What do we need? I guess a blue for now, because Fable Passages are black. Keeping his life total down at the moment. Ugh. Okay, his creatures are getting bigger and bigger. His creatures are getting bigger. Shock. That's one card that I've not seen in that deck before, so... This is interesting. He's attacking. That's kind of surprising. That is very, very surprising that he attacked. Not that he attacked with this, but that the fact that he attacked with this. Another one. Why didn't he do that? Interesting. Okay. All right, let's see what we can do here. We can kill this. We cast this, start blocking some of his big guys. He has what seven. As soon as we attack, these start triggering to activate. So let's do this. Let's kill this. The bad part is we give him this so he can use this again. That's the bad part. Um I think we play this. I think we play this. I think we're gonna play one of these tapped combat. Attack here. No, I'm two cards. And then we can hold these back. So this requires what? Exile two other cards. You'll go to what's in the graveyard. So two will be eight. You should be fine then. Can't block unless you have four or more cards. Four or more cards in hand. Oh, that messed up then. I guess I'm going to have to sack one of these. All right. I was thinking that it was, if I had, okay, what is this? Does damage equal to the number of creature cards you can you control to target creature or planeswalker? Okay. We'll put two counters on it. Sure. So you could put two counters on it to make it four, then he could do it to make it five. So we could block whatever he does on it. Sure. And we can still we can block that guy too. Still have plenty of cards in the graveyard. Okay. Okay. If he attacks, we'll block. Yeah, he's not going to attack. All right, my turn. Another land. Another land's not what the doctor called for. So we can sack. Then use a DM's Awakening to return both of them. 
So one, two, three, and then one, two. I feel like I would need to kill something here instead would be probably better. Also use this into hand and hold up a removal spell. Is that just better? That might be better. Put this into our hand, hold up drawn and lock. We go block this infinitely. Put this and ploy up. All right, yeah, we'll do that. No attacks, go ahead. Obviously we have to start trying to kill these guys because they're going to just keep getting everything else bigger. But we have Wind Robber that we can use to just infinitely block stuff. And we can kill this down the road if we need to. So pass the blockers, block, and then activate. Let's draw a card. Pass the damage. Then we have Lurus, so we can just keep doing that over and over and over. All right. Uh, do I want to kill this? Probably not. Let's activate this, though. Good. We didn't want to draw that card. Ooh, there we go. Acquisition expert, eh? So, okay, it's just going to concede. Acquisition expert. Mid range decks use efficient creatures and value generating spells. What does that say? More chane? Chane? Chana? All right, turn one. Yeah, we'll keep turn one, play this. This, this, and turn one. Turn two, we could do some other sh ooh, shenanigans. Still think it's this though. I think it's the crab regardless. We do a crab turn two. The only way we could, it would have been wise to do a tr crab turn two would be if we played like dual lands, but there is no dual lands in this deck necessarily. And that just helps. All right. So since this has to be black, we'll pay three life. Interesting. So he's Jund. So he's Jund. I feel like I'd just do this. Mill him some cards. And then mill him some cards. Okay. He has what? Seven in the graveyard already? I have to have eight or more. We can attack. It will become the eight one. And then this will trigger also. Or we could play this or play this. Either way, we do have three odds, so we have to throw an even out there. Oh, we could just play our land and it triggers too. So put this on blue trigger. All right, let's go to combat. We have our creatures have flash, so we can sit back on them for a moment. Two, four, five. I mean, is it the pause because of Trollocrons, or does he have something? What are we playing against? I mean, Jund, but Jund what? What is this? Jund, Jund food? Jund food. El Jundo. Jundo food. All right, what's happening with our opponent? Our hand's pretty good, though. Outside of him having the Trello Crowns, our hand is actually pretty good. Because we get to draw a card off this, we can flash this in at his end step. If we get another land, we can play this and hold up Drawn the Lock. Our hand's pretty darn good. I'm not 100% sold on this yet. So I might be cutting that for some other stuff. So we'll see. And we're hitting a lot of his removal out of his deck. Where's that? 
Blood Chief, two Heartless Axe. Pretty good. Yep, so he's going to use the food. Yep. Gain some life. Draw himself a card. Ooh, Nissa. That's a spicy one. Nissa's a spicy one. But we don't care. We could kill Nissa. If he plays four mana to play Nissa, we'll kill it. We could flash this in. Wicked Wolf. Um, yeah, we have to counter that. I feel like I want to grab Lores to hand here, actually. Just hit him for this. Problem with that is we don't have a land either, so. Thinking, relax. Relax, opponent. I've taken like two seconds, and you're saying, you're go. So if I add this to my hand, I hit him for four. Let's hit him first. Which is oven. Alright. We'll add Loris to our hand. Alright, go ahead. Our opponent is... My opponent is very impatient here. I took like... Five seconds and he automatically said, you're go. Like, okay. Sure. Play a land and then minus five, I guess. Ooh, that's really big. That's big. Fable Passage is big. Because now he can get it up to six counters and he can return a creature. So it's a free... He can bring something out for free. We get to kill it, but he gets to bring something out for free. Sure. So you can bring Wicked Wolf out back for free and fight our crab, I guess. If he fights this, it wouldn't work, but he has to fight our crab. If he tries to fight this, I'll just sack it. See, I could say the same thing about him. I could say your go, but sometimes, you know, it just takes, takes time to decide what you want to do. No need to rush. She has, yeah, that's the only creature here that's in there. See, now just messing around, taking a sweet time. Nope, maybe disconnected. He doesn't have any time out, so. Oh, that sucks opponent. Oh, nice, one mana. Okay, so three, four, we can't kill it unless we do this. I'm not even sure that kills it. Yeah, that kills it. Claim, yep. So, yep, Jun, Jun food, sacrifice, whatever you want to call it. That's what it is. Yeah, all right. Well, since he wasn't able to do anything with Nissa, pretty sure we locked this game up now. Since he ran out of time, and that w that was a really good draw. It gave us the ability to draw some draw some lands, I guess, pretty much. And if he does extinction event, most likely he'll just call odd, obviously. So. Yeah, we'll lose two cards because we'll sack this and draw a card off it. All right, good game, opponent. Sucks our opponent disconnected, but we were in pretty good position regardless, so... Let's go grab a black source. We need black. Or Loras. Loras requires double black. Alright. Let's mail some more cards. Let's activate. 
Now we have double black. We'll grab blue. Was that another Nissa that got mailed? Or is that the same Nissa? That it just seems to leave it on top though. All right. We're not gonna overextend. We're just gonna keep attacking. Double claim. Because we weren't gonna kill him anyway, so. And we could just flash this in at end step. So let's cast this since we can flash this in at end step. I think we win here just off time. It's going to disconnect them or something. Oh, there was another Nissa. I thought maybe it just moved the Nissa back on top, but it was a different Nissa. All right. So we dun, 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 we won against Jund Sacrifice or Jund Food, whatever you want to, I don't know what you want to call this deck, but we, Jun, Jundies. So I'm not really sure about this card. I think it's better to have like removal in there. So we might change it up a little bit. Let's see. Players with Mythic Orange names are MTG Arena team members. I have yet to play against any orange name player so yeah i have not seen one oh we're playing against mirror match i guess we're playing against the mirror dun, 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 dun. i'm gonna play krabby patty krabby patty krabby patty okay take one we'll land another one Oh, did he keep a walk? I was like, did he keep a one land hand against us? One land hand. Oh, Blood Chief. That's good, though. Okay. Let's start milling you, I guess, then. All right. You're up. Four cards to four cards. Soaring Thought Thief. Sure. You go block. Should we do the trades here? I think we might want to trade. We could trade here. Heartless act that. Sure. So block. Heartless act this. Ugh, we lost John in the block though. So also play this. It takes him up. All right. Now some cards. Ooh, nice. That was pretty sick actually. Three drama locks are gone. That was good. And it looks like he missed his land too. So we have three drama locks gone of one mind. Oh, he has the two. Okay. Well, we need to draw some draw power then. Or it is looking bad for us. Guess he just wants to mill. Sure. I guess it also activates um, activates this guy's effect. What do we have in here? We only have one drops, huh? Yeah, we only have one drops. Um, do I want to kill this and just get aggressive against him, or do I want to turn return this to a hand? So if I kill this, I feel like we. Just might be better just to be very aggressive. And then we will put this on. I guess blue, it doesn't matter. Maybe I should put that in black actually. So this crab. You block and then draw a card. Draw a card. We need to draw our draw power here. We can add Loris to our hand next turn. Okay. What's does he like randomly main deck an extinction? We have nine cards to so 16 cards. Play into the story. 
part of this act. Sure. Well, we could use this now if we want. But I feel like he has drown. Nope. Okay. There's drown unlock number four then. All right. So grab black. DM's awakening for two. I want to get this, and I want to get this. Because this will give us a draw card. And if he doesn't kill both of them, this is a one mana draw, draw two card. And that's his fourth John unlock. Sure. Can't stop that. So grab this to our hand, play this. All right, we can do even more stuff. Mail them. All right, well, okay. We beat rogues pretty easily there. So not bad. All right, rank up too. When cards in a library are known to a player, they'll see them face up. All right. Let's see, Thomas. Thomas! All right, so we get to go first. Uh, yeah, we'll keep, because we have a turn one, turn two, and of mind. It's a good hand. So play this, play crab. Next turn, play this with this. Following turn, scry and play this. Okay, good the goose. So I guess we're playing against a food deck here. Mount some cards. Yep, food. That's... Sucks. <laughs> well, that's bad. Okay, well, we're gonna have to try to do something fast because right off the bat, a troll king got milled. So, yep, and that's it's gonna be his game plan is to try. We have to kill this goose, otherwise, we're just gonna lose the game. So, we'll play this and then start milling him cards faster. I guess that's our game plan here now. Mill him six seven eight cards now don't want that yep so he's at 40 cards three six seven eight again he's gonna create a food and then just bring out troll king i was looking to see if i could draw a removal spell for the goose that he couldn't do this but we could always still draw a like a heartless act and I'll deal with it at the moment. Yep. Alright, so let's see. Of of one mind. No. Well favorite passage was a good one. Now we do six twelve. Um, I think we might need more blue here. Yeah, we have this as our black mana as well. So he has 27 cards in his deck, huh? Vigilance Trample. Make that 25. We're probably going to use this as a cycle effect instead. Just so we could... Like, if we could draw a removal, a heart attack, or something like that, or, um, what is it, Blood Chief Thirst, it's going to help us out a lot. We might be able to mill him out. He has 24 cards in his deck. Maybe. I mean, an early hinge. The turn four hinge. Oh, man, this is... All right. Oh, that game plan's out the window now, I guess, huh? Yep. Now he has a lot of damage on us. Milling off one of his troll kings. Well, that happened, huh? Okay, let's see what we draw then. 
There's not much more we can do about up oh, there it is. Play this, kill one of these. Twenty three cards, huh? Twenty three cards. Make that twenty cards. We can attack. Make it eighteen. If we had um, what is it? The um, the guild enforcer. We could have probably have done it, but I don't think we can pull it off now. Guild enforcer would have locked it in, I think, for us. Another troll king. Second troll king is, I mean, it is what it is. He has 16 cards. I mean, he's helping us by drawing cards too, so I guess that's another troll. Yep. Down to 15 cards. If we had the other one, he would have been at 12. Then he would have been at 6. Then four. Hmm. Yep, we're taking eleven. So six twelve. If we can draw Fable Passage, I think we got it. I think we'll have it. Right? Because we will do twelve, thirteen, fourteen. No, we won't have it. Never mind. <laughs> You're close. But Troll King's a beast. And we couldn't draw these early enough to kill the goose so that he wouldn't be able to do that. Oh, there's that. All right, so this is going to be two. It's going to be four. It's going to be six, seven, eight, nine. We can only do nine. And these things have trample, so we lose the game because of that. So nine, he's left with six. Yeah, if we had this earlier, maybe. I think we lose, but so two, four, six, seven, eight, eleven. If we had Fable Passage, that would have been fourteen. No. Okay, well, we're going to see if we can maybe draw Fable Passage. Let's activate, draw a card. Soren Thought Thief. Is that enough? So we do another two here. Then we attack, it does four. So if I do this, it does another two. I play this, this does three. He has six cards. This does two. I think that's game. Wow. This does two and then this does four. Increible. Wow, we pulled that one off. Yikes. All right, deck. Nicely done. What a win. What a win. He had another hinge in his hand. Yep, that should be it. Wow. Oh my gosh, that is sick, that's sick, holy moly, wow, what, 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 rusting owl, rusting owl, I go first, playing against mirror match looks like, we'll keep I guess, because we have this, this, 
this on black. Looks like it's mirror match because the mono white deck they main deck Laura, so. Put this on blue, we can cast this. Okay, I guess that's for next turn. Let's mail some more cards. If he wants to take a trade, I'm fine with that. Because then we have Rune Crab anyways. That can help us mill cards off the top of their deck. So if he wants to take a trade, I'm fine with it. I highly doubt he will, but... Battle to the metal. Sure. We took away one of his of minds. Of one mind. So that's good for us. And his man or his drop land two drop. One to the top. I guess he wants it milled. Sure. Sure thing, buddy. All right. So let's play this. Let's play this. Let's play this. Uh, I guess we might need double black here. How many cards? There's not. So this makes a ten. Trying to lock is good. I feel like I might need black here. Into the story of mine, Drowning Lock. Wow. Woo! Those are some powerhouse cards. Stone Crab, sure. Those are some powerhouse cards. Oh, that would have been nice to draw that, though. We're going to pick a card out of his hand here. All right, uh, my turn. So, I'm gonna play this, obviously, it's our land drop. Now some cards. And we'll attack here if he plays, we can counter it. Or we can even just sack it if we want. Another of one mind. So we have taken away is this three of one minds yes three and two into the stories and two drown in the locks that's pretty good all right we'll just end i guess taking away a pretty good chunk of his stuff and he's gonna play drown the lock on rune crab sure Taking away a lot of his draw and counter spell stuff. That's three drawn in the lock, I believe, right? Yeah, that's three drawn in the lock. Okay, well, we didn't want to draw crap anyway, so. Sure. If I could draw another land, that would be nice, because then I have Loras. Alright, there we go. So I can add this to my hand, put this in play, hold up drawn and lock. Guess there's no real reason to attack. So I guess we'll just hold it back. Because I attack, he'll block, he'll sack. Then I'll have to sack, I guess. Or no, he won't block and sack, I guess. Maybe I'll just trade. He doesn't play anything. We'll play acquisition expert here, I guess. Get rid of a card out of his hand, and then we can still hold this up. He's three of the drown of the locks are gone, so I'm not really worried about too many counter spells from this point on. And like I said, two into the stories are gone. Three of one minds are gone. A lot of his draw power is gone. Yeah, there's one of our into the stories.
He has 33, I have 37, but he has crab, so he's going to eventually be gaining more mills than me. Okay. That's good. Left the card on top, huh? All right, let's see if he's willing to trade. All right. I mean, that's fine with me. Let's play this, I guess. Make him discard a card. Closer. I'll take that. Sounds good enough. What's he have? What's an opponent have? I mean, we have to stop Loras pretty much. So, whatever he plays, I guess we kind of don't care in a sense. We do, but we don't. Obviously, Loris is the problem here. If he counters this, then we have this to kill it when it comes down to it. I mean, he only has one more drown in the lock, so. So, three, four, five, huh? Oh, that's a really good, powerful card. I do this. All right, let's see what happens. Hmm. I feel like I may have to shock this. So go hold up, drown in the lock. But I also think I just bring this out. Maybe I should have shocked this first. But, okay. Because he's probably going to kill Loras here. Yep. So, then maybe now I have to hold this in my hand. Alright, let's find out. Okay, so he's going to mill a lot more cards. Yikes. Oh, yikes! He only has one card in his hand. We might sack this to draw a card. Because if we get another land here, then we can do um, a DM's Awakening on a bigger, more power. Let's see, so we have a 29 to his 30, so we're pretty close to each other. We could do a DM's Awakening and do more effects. Well, there's another drone in the lock. Alright. I have no idea what he has, so... Do I care for this to resolve? A second, draw a card. I mean, I'm looking for a land though. Before I play this, I am looking for a land. Maybe I counter this one and then wait. And see what happens from there. Because we're going to be... If he draws a land of one mine... Yeah, we have to counter this. Can't let him draw two cards. Alright, let's draw first. Ooh, nice. Alright. Start attacking, milling some cards. Now we have a DM's Awakening to grab three costs and less back. So we might have this game. Especially since we have three creatures on board. Ho ho ho! Nice! That was pretty good. Sure.
So we have one drop, three drop, two drop. So we have one, two, and three here. One, two, and three. So if I sack this, how many cards does he have? He has 24. If I sack this draw card, hopefully it's a land. Okay, it's land. Um, maybe I grab crab here instead. So, one, two, three. So one drop, two drop, three drop. Mill him for six cards here. Um, I think we want the blue mana here. Mill him some more cards again. And then we can cast Wind Rubber from the graveyard. Now we can get into combat. There we go. I think we got this one. Because we both have the same exact, well, not the same exact field, obviously. We both have a lot of crap on in play. What does this have? Dead Touch Menace. Sure. I think all of his drown the locks are gone, I believe, right? So one, two, three, four, yep, all of them are gone. I have 18, he has 13. He can't attack me, I can attack him clearly. Can they? There we go. Well, we can't, because it has counters, so we can't do that one. Um, I can kill this guy, I guess, and then just attack with my air creatures. Also, also return guild enforcer, mill him two, mill him four, mill him some more. He has 13 cards left in the deck, so let's return this. Into the story, nice. Mill some more cards. So it has Death Touch, Menace, Lifelink. Death Touch, Menace, Lifelink. If I kill this, this is a free attack, I guess. He has what, nine cards left? I have 17. So attack, 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 attack. Yeah. Mill another four cards off him. He goes down to five. He's also at eight, so he has to be careful. He might just die to combat. Okay. I guess I should sack this to draw a card because it could just hardly sack this anyways. Way. Yep. Sure. Oh, nice. Let's mill some, mill some cards and discard the card out of his hand. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but when does he have two cards in his hand? Go will pay this for something, I guess. Sure. I mean, look, he has a, <laughs> he can grab whatever he wants, but he has one card left in his deck. Sure. So he drew a land. That means he drew a land. If he's grabbing Rune Crab, that means he drew a land. Yep. 
he drew a land. He has two more lands in the deck anyways. There we go. We just beat rogues yet again. Hey, welcome back. Um, as you just saw in some of those matches, we played against some of the meta decks. We played against, you know, what is it? We played against Rogue. We played against Esper. We played against Food. We played against John, Mono White. We played against Blue, Black, you know, Rogue, whatever. So it has a very good, strong game against a lot of those decks. And we played this deck, as you saw, in best of one, even though it has a sideboard. Um, I created a sideboard in case you wanted to play this as a best of three deck. But like I said, I built this deck uh, for the purpose of a best of one. But if you're not interested in playing best of one, I created a sideboard for you so that you could play it in best of three. And I will give you the sideboard guide as well. If I took this into a best of three match, I will tell you how I would sideboard against those matchups. But like I said, I built this for the purpose of a best of one. But if you're not interested in best of one, I will give you the sideboard and the sideboard guide to show you what to do against the decks. I won't give you like it won't be against like you know six meta game decks. Um, I will give you primarily like the top four decks here, so that way you can play against that. Um, but yeah, before we get into that, go ahead and hit that subscribe, hit that like button, um, hit that follow the notifications, check out the description of the, in the video. I'll have the deck list link, the stream deck or deck list link so you can easily export it. I'll have my Twitch, my uh, Discord, all that, Twitter, I'll have all the links there. So if you want to follow me anywhere on social media, join my Discord. It's brand new. I just made a Discord. I'll be posting decks and cyborg guides on there. So that way, if you need it, like on paper or something like that, I'll be posting the cyborg guide there. But yeah, go ahead and hit that subscribe on YouTube, hit that follow on Twitch, um, and let's get into this um, cyborg guide. So like I said, you saw the decks, and we played it as a best of one, but if you wanted to play this as a best of three, this is what I would do in a best of three if you were to play this in a best of three. But if you like best of one, play it in a best of one. You just saw us very good in a best of one. So the first deck we're going to create a cyborg guide to is against Gruul. The cy these cyborg guides are pretty simple because you can't really change too much of your game plan with this deck. This deck is purpose is to mill your opponent and then try to get these guys active and start doing massive amount of damage. So if you change your, your plan too much with this deck, if you change your plan too much with this deck, it'll fall apart. And so that's why there's not going to be very much to cyborg and which is the reason why there's only a few cards in the sideboard or a few different cards in the sideboard that's why you can't really change your game plan too much here otherwise your game plan will fall apart so if we're playing against gruel here what i do against gruel is i add three mages just because you can steal since they're all creatures pretty much you can start stealing their powerful creatures here and you know bring it to your side and the beautiful part of stealing some of their powerful creatures is let's say guild enforcer is not active let's say you have wind robber right you can still a love struck with this and you can attack with love struck so against gruel what we do is we bring in three mages lulu mage dominations and what i would cut is i would cut of one mind i would cut one acquisition expert and i would cut one crab here so the crab isn't that great here because they're gonna have a lot of you know three threes with made um with what's his name the mammoth they're gonna have brush fire probably become a three three worst case scenario this can't even block anything so i would cut one of those and since you're cutting one of your non-humans i would also cut of one mind for that reason and you're cutting one of your humans so this is less likely to be a one mana spell and more likely to be a three mana spell and so I would also cut Acquisition Expert just because it's going to be a two mana to make them discard effect. And you're adding cards in to steal their creatures. So that's what I would do against uh, Gruul. I would cut of one mind because you're removing your human and non-human creatures. So it becomes a three cost. One Acquisition Expert because it doesn't really block anything really. I mean a token I guess. But it doesn't really block anything and you're paying two mana to make them discard a card. It's not very good against the um Gruel because then you're just going to discard their weaker card and then just throw all these powerhouse creatures out there 
and one rune crab because it's not going to be able to block anything and if it does block anything it automatically will die so take out one rune crab one acquisition expert one of mind and add three mages lulu mage dominations against gruel now if we're playing against rogue um this is a little you get to bring in a lot more against rogue just because it's um i don't know i guess it's just better to have more in because rogue versus rogue obviously it's gonna be a 50 50 match whoever just draws the better cards whoever just draws more into the stories whatnot so against rogue we bring in two cling to the dust we bring in two mystical disputes and we bring in all four skyclave shades obviously cling to dust you want to escape your cards so their rogue cards are weaker so these cards gold enforcer and sworn thought thief don't do very much against you you want to bring in mystical dispute because you want to be able to counter the key cards in their deck so you want to be able to counter of one mind uh, into the story or you want to counter into the you know drown into the locks soaring thought thief for one mana being able to counter those is going to be really big then also we want to bring in four skyclave shades and the reason why we bring in four skyclave shades is because they're going to be milling us so down the line, you know, if you don't have your rogue creatures, you play a land and you get to play this from your graveyard with your land drop. So this is going to be great against rogues since their game plan is to mill you. There is, if you're bringing in four in a 60 card deck, you're most likely going to have one, two, you know, in your graveyard pretty early. And now you have a 3-1 body attacking them. And they can't block you effectively because it kills all the creatures. If they decide they want to block, it kills every single creature, even this, because it becomes a best case scenario becomes like a five, two, this will become like, say a four, three or something like that. So it gets, to, if they want to block, it gets to kill everything. And if they block, then you play a land and you recast this. So once again, we bring in two clings, two disputes and four skyclave shades. What I take out against rogues is I would take out all four rune crabs because against rogues, you're, I mean, you could obviously mill them out, but the game plan isn't to completely mill them out. It's to have seven to eight cards in your, in their graveyard. So that way your cards become active. This will become active. So you can draw a card. Guild Enforcer becomes a three, two. So you can start attacking them. Uh, Soaring Thought Thief gives all the rogues plus one, plus zero. Once that happens, your draw on the lock can now start countering every single card. Um, into the story becomes a four mana cost card rather than a seven mana cost card. So that's your main reason why you're trying to mill them. You're obviously, you could mill them and win the game that way, but you're, it's rare for that to happen. And I mean, you saw against the food deck, that's how I won, but it's rare for that to happen. The main reason here is to have seven to eight cards in their graveyard. So your, your rogues start to become active. So yeah, so that's why we take out four crabs and then we take out uh, two experts because we just have better cards to bring in, in that case, two mana to make them discard. I mean, it is a rogue, so it does help, but yeah. So we bring in two clings, four sky cliches, two disputes. We take out four crabs and two experts. That's what we do against rogues. Now, if we're playing against food, um, you, what you wanna do, it's like, once again, it's simple. We bring in three mages and we take out of one mind, one acquisition expert and one crab. It's kind of the same thing as Gruul, where this is not gonna do anything. It just dies to almost all their creatures. Um, so we're not gonna leave that in there. We keep three in there because we still have that game plan of trying to mill them so we can have our rogues active. And then one acquisition expert, it's gonna be easy for them to kill this guy. Um, so we're using two mana to make them discard a card. It's, it's good but it's better in a best of one game when they don't have, you know, they have less things to interact with this and you have more rogues so you can start triggering more of your stuff. Cause after sideboarding, they're gonna get more prepared for more of your creatures. So casting this for two mana and then they killing this won't be that great. And then of one mind, obviously, because we're taking out both human and non-human. So this will be less likely to become a one mana spell. So we take out one crab, one acquisition expert and a one of one mind and bring in three mages so we can steal their creatures. If we can steal a troll king, they can't kill troll king 
by itself because they have no removal. So they're going to have to try to get like a Wicked Wolf with a bunch of um, food tokens to fight it. And if they do that, then they have less food in play to bring Troll King back out. So that's why we're bringing Lulu Mage Domination. Since we're milling them so many cards, this card will cost three less and we can start stealing their big powerhouse creatures. So that's what we do against food. Now, the last deck I'm going to do in Cyborg Guide is to Doom Foretold decks. And against Doom Foretold decks, we bring in two Cling to Dust, two Disputes, and four Skyclave Shades. Cling to Dust we bring in so that way it makes their Dance and Mance um, less powerful. It can remove their creatures if they try to do an um, ECD, Elspeth's Nightmare, uh, Elspeth's Conqueror's Death against us. And then Skyclave Shade, obviously this feeds for Doom Foretold, so that way we can keep sacking, sacking, sacking. We play a land, we sack it, we play this card, sack it. Play a land, play this card, sack it. Play a land, you know. So that's why we play Skyclave Shade. It's an infinite sack effect as long as you have a land. And in the worst case scenario, it's a 3-1 body that can start attacking them and putting pressure. We bring in two mages just because we want to counter their specific spells. We want to counter Doom Foretold. We want to counter um, Elspeth Conquers That. We want to counter, uh, what's it called? Dance the Mance, Yorion. So we bring those in for that reason. Um, we could also bring in Duress, which I, I guess I would bring in Duress against them too, three Duresses, just because you want to take away those key cards also out of their hand. So we bring in two Klings, um, Three Duress, four Skyclave Shades, and two Mystical Dispute. This is against a Doom Foretold. And then what we take out is we take out four Crabs. They're an 80 card deck. Like I said, it's very le less likely that we will mill them. It's an 80 card deck. So we take out four Crabs. Um, we still have enough cards to mill them so that we can activate these guys. But having 03 is not going to be great. We're not putting pressure on their life total. Since we're not really going to be able to mill them, we want to put pressure onto their life total. And this puts no pressure onto their life total. The O3 won't be able to attack. I cut the three acquisition experts. And the reason why I cut the three acquisition experts because... So the purpose of this is to make them discard, right? But since we're bringing in three duresses, it does the same exact thing. I mean, obviously minus it's not a rogue. But we get to look at their hand and take out a specific card that we want rather than them giving us a card to discard they can give us a land to discard so what is this we can look at their hand and specifically discard a card so we take out four crabs we take out three acquisition experts we take out you can actually take out two acquisition experts leave one in the reason for that is because we're going to take out three blood chief thirst and two heartless acts so we're bringing in what two five 9, 10, 11, we take out 4 crabs, we take out 3 blood chiefs, that's 7, we take out 2, 8, 9, and then we take out 2 heartless acts, that makes it 11. We take out heartless acts, blood chief thirst, because they're not really running creatures, the only creatures they have is skyclave apparition, and they have Yorion, they have tokens, but you're not really want to use a, a card against tokens, so it's not worth it to do that. So that's why we're taking out our removal because they don't have creatures. And we're bringing in uh, hand disruption, draw power with cling, and counter spells, and a reoccurring threat for Doom Foretold. So once again, we bring in two clings, three duresses, four skyclave shades, two mystical disputes. And what we take out is four rune crabs, three blood chief thirst, two acquisition experts, and two heartless acts. That's what we do against a Doom Foretold deck. So, but this is that was your best of three sideboard guide. Um, like I said, I in the video, it's obviously I was playing best of one deck. I built this deck for that purpose of a best of one. But if you want to play this as a best of three, that's your sideboard guide. Also, if you are to play this as a best of three deck, what I would recommend right off the bat is I would go ahead and take out one of the triumphs and add another um not a swamp but add castle of lock with here so if you're playing this in a best of three i would add one castle of lock with here because you want to be able to draw a card so you can either you can either cut the triome or you could cut a de temple of the sea and add that 
If you don't also have three of these, you could cut one of these and add the castle of lock width. But I would add the castle of lock width in a best of three matchup because you want to have that extra additional draw power in a best of three matchup. Where in a best of one, you're just kind of going aggressive very fast, especially since you're sideboarding and making your deck slower after game one. You know, with duresses, cling, skyclave, shades, more interaction, you want to have that additional draw power in best of three. But since you're not sideboarding in best of one, you're a glass cannon deck, and your game plan is to just mill, attack, mill, attack, mill, attack. You're not going to have chances to use castle lock with in best of one. That's the reason why I didn't add it here. And we have a lot of draw power, so and since you're going to be possibly cutting some of your draw power in best of three, I would either take out one of DM's Awakening or one Triome and add a Castle of Lockwood. You could add, take a Swamp out if you want to add a Castle of Lockwood, but I would take out one of the tap sources and add a Castle of Lockwood. But yeah, so that's the sideboard guide. If you, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe, hit that like button. Um, I post videos weekly two to three I'm, I'm trying to do a little more but you know i have uh, priorities and whatnot and all that stuff so it's hard for me to post multiple videos i don't really play that much magic um as it is um so but once i start playing more and more magic i'll start posting more and more videos but yeah go ahead hit that subscribe hit that like button and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching